Hello everybody and welcome to the SI Digest. We run through the biggest esports business related news stories of the week. I'm your host Tom Daniels, the sub-editor of Esports Insider and today we have five huge news stories in the world of esports business. Now before we do start this ESI Digest, I do want to thank out our partners Omnicoach, the esports fan monetization platform. So if you are an esports business looking to boost fan monetization by connecting sponsors with fans through gamified solutions, then head over to their website. In this week's ESI Digest, we're going to be covering Game Square Esports acquiring Complexity Gaming for $27 million. Schalke 04 Esports selling its LEC spot to Team BDS for 26.5 million euros. Guild Esports recent financial report over the last six months and what these figures mean. Mobile Legends Bang Bang has also created an esports league in Brazil, the first outside of Southeast Asia. And Williams Racing is partnering with Resolve to enter into RLCS Season 11. So let's get straight into it. So our first story of the ASI Digest sees North American esports organization Complexity announced that it has been acquired by GameSquare Esports, who many people were mainly known as the parent company of esports agency Code Red Esports. Now, according to the release, the acquisition will total around $27 million, which is roughly £19 million, and it is an all-stock transition, which means that as a result, Complexity's ownership group will become major shareholders of GameSquare Esports. What is also very interesting is since GameSquare Esports is a publicly traded company, that means that Complexity, now being a part of this whole conglomerate, will be publicly traded as well, which I think is really, really positive and actually really great news for Complexity. And it'd be really interesting to see how kind of the funding increases or how the stock prices increases due to them now being a part of GameSquare Esports. Just as a quick last note as well, the North American organization will continue to operate in its Frisco, Texas headquarters and all of Complexity's Esports rosters, which span like a multitude of titles, will continue to compete under the same banner. I think that this is actually a really smart transition from Complexity and GameSquare Esports, which has continually tried to develop itself recently. Obviously, we've seen the likes, I think, of Tony Hawk, who has joined as like a strategic advisor. So I do think that this is a really, really interesting story. And I, I kind of hope to see where this will push complexity in the next couple of years and kind of how will it affect complexity, you know, like I said, in the near future. Our second story of the ASI Digest has kind of been a story which has been developing for quite a while, but now that it's been officially announced, I do want to actually have a little bit of a talk about it and the implications of that as well. And it's the fact that Schalke 04 Esports has announced the sale of its League of Legends European Championship, its LEC, licensed to Swiss esports organisation Team BDS. Schalke 04 Esports did reveal in their announcement that the spot will be sold at the end of the 2021 summer split and for a total of 26.5 million euros. Euros. This is a significant increase in the price tag that Schalke 04 Esports paid back in 2019, with the price roughly estimated to have been 8 million euros. So the fact of the matter is, is that they've made a significant profit off this after only being in the league for two years. Now, Team BDS has been selected after a five-month selection process, it was revealed, led by Riot Games and Schalke 04. And for those who don't know much about Team BDS, they are primarily known I believe for like the Rocket League team but they also have competed in League of Legends and are currently competing in League of Legends in the French kind of European Regional League the LFL. This is the team which from what I've kind of been researching has got a lot of money behind them is very well backed so it'll be very interesting to see how they do when they come into this league. Are they going to keep the contracts of the players? Are they going to kind of keep the whole staff and the organization or are they just going to completely kind of wipe everything? It is a bit upsetting to see see Schalke go but given the fact that Schalke the football club had massive financial issues which have been reported you know for the last like 12 months even two years this wasn't like a shock to see this happen. Our third story of the SI Digest sees us talk about UK based esports organisation Guild Esports and then revealing the financial results over a six month period ending March 31st 2021. Now, in these financial results, Guild did report a loss of £4.3 million over the six-month period, with the organisation citing its investments in its esports teams, the Guild Academy, content creation, and its corporate infrastructure as a factor in the loss. It was also revealed in the financial results that Guild made roughly 369000 from the six-month period in revenues, and this includes prize money, which equated to 284000 Now, while those revenue figures aren't 
wasn't exactly great, let's be quite honest. You've got to take into account the fact that this was March 31st, 2021, in which these financial results of the six year pe of the six month period, sorry, was recorded. So just to put into context, Guild Esports' deal with HyperX, which is a two year deal, was signed in January 28th or announced in January 28th. And then also their multi million pound, what they've described as a multi million pound deal with Subway, was on March 25th. Guild did announce also in the financial reports that with those sponsorships alongside its Samsung deal and then probably future sponsorships as well, the organization has secured a minimum of 7.5 million in contracted revenue. Now, we don't know exactly where the split of that revenue is going to be, but I think it does make that 400,000 figure revenue uh, kind of amount seem a little bit better knowing that there is future revenue. I don't think it's a massive shock to see an esports organization that is invested so heavily make a loss when it's only been kind of operating really for about two years. If these financial results kind of don't improve in the next like two, three years, then yes, I think there is a cause for concern. But with kind of the added revenue stream and hopefully my merchandise sales will start to go up and the fan bases will start to go and maybe they go and develop into other titles as well. You can kind of hope to see that this will increase. It's great to kind of see transparency come through from an esports organization. Obviously with them being on the London Stock Exchange, it means that they have to kind of publish these reports. I do feel like this is actually really good because you kind of do get an insight in the fact that, you know, not all esports organizations are running on a profit. If not, most aren't running on a profit. And it is about kind of getting that investment to try and hopefully gain a profit in the next two to three years and it does feel like that is what guild have done right now they've invested heavily in the short term to hopefully gain kind of higher revenue opportunities in the long term. A penultimate story of the SI Digest sees us talk about mobile games and Moonton has expanded its Mobile Legends Bang Bang Professional League structure to include Brazil. Now this is the first MPL competition to take place outside of Southeast Asia. The inaugural season will consist of a total of eight teams and will feature a $30,000 which is £21,000 prize pool. Six teams will be invited into MPL Brazil with two Two teams coming from open qualifiers, which I believe will begin in June 16th. So don't expect to be waiting a long time before these kind of invited teams get announced. In addition, they've also announced a partnership with TikTok Live. And as part of the deal, the competition will be broadcast on TikTok, as well as Facebook, Nemo TV, Twitch and YouTube. MPL Brazil champ the MPL Brazil champion, sorry, will also go into future global Mobile Legends Bang Bang tournaments and the World Championship Series. So they will be fully integrated into the MPL structure. Yeah, I think this is huge for mobile esports and also for mobile legends. As you can see, like mobile esports in Brazil in particular has started to become even more popular. It's a very mobile centric esports kind of uh, region right now, it seems. And obviously we've all also seen the launch of the Wild Rift circuit, which is League of Legends mobile title, also going into Brazil as well. So it'll be really interesting to see kind of who the teams are, what teams are going to be announced, and kind of how people receive this tournament. A final story of the SI Digest sees Formula One team Williams Racing announce it will participate in the Rocket League Championship Series RLCS Season 11. Now what is really interesting about this and what makes it more business centric is that as a result of this expansion they have also partnered with UK esports organisation Resolve Esports in order to kind of work as an advisor and to gain knowledge within the Rocket League esports scene. Partnerships between traditional and esports organisations are not kind of rare, they're actually very common we've seen it especially over the last couple of years where we've seen kind of two entities kind of go together to help bolster the traditional sports kind of esports output williams racing does have their own kind of esports division division sorry they've been in like i racing gran turismo factor 2 also i believe that their race also won like the olympic virtual series in motorsport as well so it's really interesting to see williams look at this and be like right okay we want to kind of branch out outside of racing but still racing themed and that is rocket league as well it's racing and football so i like the fact that they've kind of took a partnership with resolve and kind of merged them a little bit together to help kind of williams racing get through this and actually learn more about the traditional side of esports and not just kind of the sim racing side and that's it for this week's ASI digest i'd once again love to thank our partners omni coach for sponsoring this episode if you do want to read up on any of the stories that i've discussed or any more of the stories which have come out there's been a lot of news come out this week then don't forget to head over to esports insiders website also don't forget to follow us on linkedin on twitter we're very close to twenty thousand on linkedin as well 
well, which is really amazing. And also, if you do want to vote for us on the Esports Award as Esports Platform Coverage Site of the Year, then please do and head over to Esports Awards as well. But until then, I will see you next time.